Hi, it's David Gaum in the Stained Glass Studio, and this is Anatomy of a Cut, and also why we use oil when we cut glass. So, the other day, a student asked Jeannie why you use oil, and she gave her the A correct answer, which is that you oil the cut, oil the glass cutter, so that the little wheel can can be lubricated and that is true but that's not the only reason and I realized that I had never given uh, either Jeannie or you guys a full explanation as to why we oil a cut so first things first I'm going to cut using this cutter and I'm not going to use any oil on it. So now, Jeannie, if you'll get right in here. Now, first I'm going to do a really aggressive cut, pushing hard. Okay, see how scratchy that is? Now then, I'm going to do a medium pressure. And see, that's just about as scratchy. And now I'm going to do a light pressure. Okay, so see that? You can see little pieces of crusty, sandy stuff come up here. A little less here and a little less, even less here. So now we're going to break them. And here's what I do. Now, the catch, the reason I like to show this method, this break apart method with your thumb, on, both thumbs on top, and you rock your hands apart, is so that when you do it, you'll remember the action. And that way, when you do it with pliers, you'll remember, you can always use your hands and, and, and practice. And so here's what we're doing. We're... Okay, now we're going to go for the anatomy of this cut, and I want you to look down here. This is called the zipper. Now, right along here, you can see kind of a, a ridge running into the glass, and, it, and it's somewhat jaggedy. Now, the worse the zipper is, the uh, here's another one. Here's the me medium one. And I don't know if you can even hardly see the zipper in that one. And then here's the final one. Okay, and so each one of them is diminishing. One looks worse than, than than the other. Let me do one that's where I really push on it. I'm going to really... See the jaggediness that runs up and down? Can you see that? When you go to solder that, there's an, there would be an opportunity for this piece of glass to break from the heat. So that is something that you don't want to do. And one of the reasons that we oil the cut is that this, uh, this sand that builds up, this grit, this is silica. The glass is made from silica sand. And the silica that builds up can get down into the crack as you're, as you're scoring. And that can give you a, a, a poor cut. Your cut can then 
break when you heat it. It can it can also break when uh, when you uh, um, when it gets hit by the sunlight and the glass expands and contracts. And so that's something you want to avoid. Now, so when you dip your glass cutter in oil, now we'll see. I'm going to do another really hard push. Did you hear how much quieter it was? And you don't see that um, sandy grit build up. And did you? And that was a really easy break. And here's your zipper. And that was me pushing really hard. So it's less aggressive when you oil your cut. Now I do know there are some stained glass people who do not oil their cut ever. But they have they have reasons. A lot of times these are guys who are going to place their glass in leaded channel. And so they don't even hardly wash their glass before having it placed in between tempered sheets of glass. And so they don't want there to be a lot of debris in their, in their finished product. But that's not the way we do it. We want to wash our, our glass. Now then, the next thing I wanted to show you that was why we use oil. Now I want to show you this. Um, why do you not go over a score more than once? This you'll notice that this glass cutter is broken at the top, and so it's a it's going to be sacrificial. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the same score several times. Here we are. Okay, and you can see the sandy, cruddy stuff. And now I'm going to do that again. You hear the grindiness of it? And then we're going to do it again. This is what happened when my father and I did a, a, a glass cutting when I was five years old. It was my first experience with glass and he was using one of those steel wheel cutters that you get from the hardware store and neither of us knew that as he did that he was actually ruining his wheel. Now let's see. Hear that? It still sounds pretty good because it's not destroyed because this is not a steel wheel. This is a carbide wheel. However, um, if you keep doing that, you'll ruin your glass cutter. Now, <sighs> I don't even know if I can get this to Get a pair of running pliers, I guess. The, the fact is I've gone over it so many times that it's just not really cooperating. It doesn't want to, to work. And so, you know, that's how you ruin a, a glass cutter is to go over the same cut several times. That I even got a chunk of my skin. Okay, now I want to show you this. I 
Jeannie, would you hand me a band-aid? Okay, so on these glass cutters, there's a little wheel. But there's also a little nut here. And when you take the nut off and you pull it loose, see the little spring inside? Look at the end here. You see there? That is a piece of cotton. Now, if you yank that piece of cotton out and then fill your glass cutter, the oil will run all the way through and, and out. But the piece of cotton is made to stop it. And also what happens is then when you put your your cutter head back on, that little piece of cotton rides right up there at the end of the wheel and that presses up against the wheel and that's how you get oil on your cut. It's also how you get oil when you don't fill it then you can touch touch and it there's a little bit of oil in there and so that that oils it up and how do you like that? works great. Now there was one other thing I wanted to show you about these glass cutters. Uh, my favorite is the Toyo glass cutter. This one's the easiest to read. If you buy a replacement blade for a Toyo, this glass cutter head will cost you almost as much as your original uh, purchase. See what it says there? TC number one. Well, this is not a steel wheel. This is a carbide hardened steel tip. And it's ground at such a, an angle, the TC one is kind of a the generic any hardness glass wheel. What that means is it's ground at such an angle that there are different hardnesses and I think there are like a 1 through 10 scale and the TC1 is made so that it'll cut any one of those hardnesses. There are some people who will actually buy I think a TC3, but I ne have never needed to do that. I've always gone with this generic, all-purpose wheel, and that works really well for me. Both of these are TC1s, so I don't have any way to compare anything different to you, but that's a TC1. <laughs> and so... That's my little primer on the anatomy of a cut. Um, and the Toyo TC1 will cut any one of the hardnesses of glass that we stained glass artists run into. So, thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.